it's Jeff with JW Designs. Thanks for stopping in and checking out the channel. A couple friends of mine asked me to make a coffee bar for their kitchen area. They're hoping to provide some refreshments to their friends and family as they come over and enjoy some time together. I'm hoping that this project helps you create by providing some tips and tricks for design, assembly, and the like. The project begins for me with taking it from concept to reality. How I do that is sitting down to a piece of paper with a pen and a ruler and just trying to sketch things out. I had gone to the home and measured the space where this cabinet would be going, so I'm simply confirming those measurements. Next step is to begin milling the lumber for the build. The boards have already been jointed, so the next step is to plane them. After planing them, I'll be careful to take them to the table saw and rip them down to dimension. Sometimes getting lumber can be a bit of a challenge, till a friend of mine contacted me regarding this lumber. It's 100-year-old white oak that was used to build a bridge. That bridge was on a farm, the farmer tore it down, and then this friend of mine contacted me asking if I was interested in it. I said, of course. Now, the beautiful thing about it, it didn't have any nails in it. After planing things down and making sure that we had something square, it's time to take it over to the table saw and rip it to final width. With the coffee bar being 35 inches tall and the top being an inch and a half thick, I subtracted that from the 35 and we land on our measurement for the legs. I'm putting a bit of an angle on the legs for some character. After drawing things out on the legs for the angles that I want, I take them over the bandsaw and simply follow the line that I had placed on the leg. And I do this for the four front legs. The beauty of having an assembly table is that I can lay this project out, especially since it's smaller than the assembly table. confirming measurements for the project with layout, now I'm drawing those dimensions on the sheet. This is so that I can cut the dividers to length and the panels to the right size. There are a few different pieces that I'm cutting for this cabinet. I'm cutting the upper supports. I'm also cutting the panels. I'll be cutting the bottom panels and the drawer panels as well. I'm using pocket holes to hold this cabinet together. I'll be putting pocket holes in the braces and supports and panels. Do you know what happened to the guy who emptied his wallet into a bowl of nachos? He, he cashed in his chips. <laughs> it was a bit of a challenge putting everything together and making sure it was in the right spot. Here's what I mean by that. When I was clamping everything together, there were moments where ply would move or the leg would move, or maybe there's just a hair of a twist in the leg, that kind of thing. So I had to be very careful to make sure I drilled a pilot hole, that I put the screws in, that everything was held down tightly. That's why you see so many clamps here. You might be wondering why there are two panels connected to this leg. The reason why I did this is because the legs are somewhere around two inches wide. 
With that measurement, it makes the drawer slides a little more difficult to assemble and put on the cabinet. This makes the assembly of the drawer slides a little easier. After milling the lumber, after cutting everything to size, regarding the plywood pieces, now it's time to put it all together. During this project, I definitely had some brain fog going on. If it hadn't been for Nellie helping me out and confirming measurements, it would have been a real challenge to get everything right. As it is, when I got everything together, I confirmed that it was square by measuring from corner to corner on the top, and it is exactly 72 and a half both ways. I'm laying plywood on here to make sure that I have enough thickness to face it with white oak. That's what's going to happen in just a moment. Now it's time for those top braces to be installed. This will be what I attach the top to. I found it was necessary to drill pilot holes into the oak leg so that it didn't split on the corner. Make sure that you didn't have the exposed ply looking at you. I put white oak on the face of this. That's what you see me doing right here. I'm making sure that each piece is measured specifically for that opening. For part two, you'll see me assembling doors, drawers, and putting the top on. Thanks for watching part one of the coffee bar build. In part two, you'll see me complete the project. Till next time, keep making sawdust.